Hello everybody, this is Sam. First of all, let's review the words from our last episode, which was episode 41. Those words were lament, ephemeral, conciliatory, and implicit. Lament is a passionate expression of grief or sorrow. So imagine a bird singing a sad song because their mate died. Ephemeral, that means something that lasts for a very short amount of time, like a new fashion trend that was ephemeral. Conciliatory, that is when something is intended to placate or pacify someone. So if you talk in a conciliatory tone of voice, you're perhaps trying to calm someone down or appeasing someone. And implicit, that means when something is implied, though not plainly expressed. So it's implied that you are quiet if you go to a church or another place of worship, but often it's not clearly expressed. We just know it. Right, now it's time for episode 42, a new set of words. This is the Victor Prep Vocab Podcast. I'm Sam Fold, and our first word is indolent. Indolent. That's spelled I-N-D-O-L-E-N-T. Indolent. And indolent is a word that means, quite simply, to be lazy to want to avoid activity or exertion. Synonyms are lazy, idle, slothful, loafing, do nothing, languid, underactive, inert, sluggish, or lethargic. The origin of this word, like so many of the words we look at, is from Latin, and it means not feeling pain. In at the start of words often means not, and the dolent part comes from a Latin word dolere. I'm not sure how you pronounce that, dolere, I think, which means to suffer or give pain. So, in meaning not, and dolere mean not to suffer, not to have pain. So, the idea of laziness as avoiding pain, which In many cases, you might avoid pain by being lazy. But probably, if you're lazy on a consistent basis, you're probably going to get more pain in the future. So it probably doesn't work that well. (laughs) Anyway, indolent. Yeah, so try and think of some examples of when you've been indolent or when perhaps someone else has been indolent. Maybe you're being indolent today. When you were trying to get up in the morning and you hit snooze a few more too many times, That was being indolent. Our second word is transgression. Transgression. That is spelled T-R-A-N-S, trans, G-R-E-S-S-I-O-N, gression, transgression. A transgression is an act that goes against a law or rule. So if you commit a transgression... You have done something against the law, or done something against a rule, or other other code of conduct. So, an offence. So, if you're in school, and the teacher has told the class to be quiet, and you start talking, that could be a transgression. Or, if the speed limit on the road you're on is 100 miles an hour, and you're going 120, that is a transgression. Or, if you're religious and you're blasphemous, that could be a transgression, too, of your religious code of conduct. Some synonyms are offence, crime, sin, wrong, wrongdoing, a misdemeanor, a misdeed, law-breaking. It is important to note that transgression doesn't simply mean something illegal. It just means something against any arbitrary set of rules or code of conducts. So, a transgression in school might not be illegal, it's just wrong in that particular context. Transgression itself, the original meaning of the word, comes from the meaning of going across something, like moving across a boundary. So, 
if you have transgressed, you've crossed over a line. You've gone over the line of acceptable behavior or everything is okay to you've broken a rule, you've broken a code of conduct. Our third word is facetious. Facetious. It's spelled F-A-C-E-T-I-O-U-S. Facetious. So it looks like it's spelled facetious. But yes, it's pronounced facetious. And to be facetious means to treat serious issues with deliberately inappropriate humor or to be flippant. So you may have known someone in school or in university who was always the joker and even in a serious situation might make an inappropriate remark or a rude joke or something like that. To do that is to be facetious. Some synonyms are flippant, glib, frivolous, tongue-in-cheek, ironic, sardonic, joking, playful, teasing, mischievous, comical, light-hearted, or amusing. A facetious comment or remark can also be one which you don't mean to be taken seriously or literary. So, you're joking around, you're not making a serious comment. One interesting, but not particularly funny, fact about facetious is it's only one of two words that have all five vowels in the correct order in the word. So, facetious has A, E, I, O, and U in the correct order in the word. Kind of interesting. The only other word that has that property is abstemious, which I hope you remember from our earlier episode. Anyway... Our final word for today is juncture. Juncture. That is spelled J-U-N-C-T-U-R-E. Now, juncture sounds very much like the word junction and, in fact, means something similar too. Because when you get to a junction in a road, you have to pick a direction in which you're going to go. It's a point where you can go in different directions. So, a juncture means a particular point in events or time. So you could say, at this juncture, I'm not sure what I want to do next with my life. Do I go to university or do I get a job? Some synonyms of juncture are point, a point in time, moment, a moment in time, and so on. Juncture also has a secondary meaning, which is very similar, again, to junction. And a juncture can be a place where things join. So you could say, I'll meet you at the juncture of two mountains. That's the place where the two mountains join. I think juncture is more often used with the meaning of a particular point in events or time. But there is this secondary meaning, of course. So, you could think about an example where you were at a particular juncture in your life and you had a big decision to make. Or maybe you've got a big decision now. Or maybe one of your friends or family is at an interesting juncture in their life. So, those are our four words. Let's quickly go over their meanings again. Our first word was indolent. Indolent. That means wanting to avoid pain. So, to be lazy, to avoid activity, to avoid strenuous exertion, to want to sit around on the sofa all day. Transgression. Transgression. That means any act that goes against a law, a rule, a code of conduct, means an offence. Facetious. Facetious. That means treating serious issues with inappropriate humor, to be inappropriately jokey in serious situations. And our final word was a juncture, juncture, and that means at a particular point in events or time. It can also mean a place where things join. So a juncture of two mountains. Now let's go over some example sentences. I'll go over four sentences which refer to the meanings of these words, but without using the word. It's up to you to 
guess which word I'm referring to. James fled the scene of the crime. If the school found out he had dyed the swimming pool red, he would probably be expelled. I made a rather inappropriate joke while my teacher was reviewing the serious topic of global warming. I thought it was funny at the time, but later that night I blushed with shame. At a certain point in my life, I decided I needed a change. I was bored with my current surroundings and I felt trapped. So I sold or gave away my belongings, said goodbye to my friends, and moved to Paris. My hamster, Lucas, is always eating too much, and then lazing around all day. I never see him using his wheel, and when I take him out of his cage, he curls up in my hands and falls asleep. Those were our words for today. Please don't forget to try and use some of these words. Make up your own examples. I would suggest at least one or two of your own example sentences for each word. And then, if you can, try and use the word in a conversation. Use the word with a friend or your family. Because really, once you realize that the word can actually be useful and used in a conversation, so you can say some to someone, hey, stop being so indolent, or whatever it is, that really makes it become part of your mental model. So you can then retrieve that word whenever you want to use it in the right situation for that word. Please, as usual, send your emails and feedback to sam.fold at gmail.com. I really appreciate everything I get. Anyway, thank you all very much. I'll speak to you next time. Bye-bye.